Good morning, Briar fans. How are we today on this lovely Saturday morning? I'm here with Christina Riley, owner and artist of Art by C. Riley. We're so happy everyone's joined us today. Uh, we are going to be making a sun catcher stable mate. As Christina, you can see there on her screen, we're all set and ready to go. How beautiful is that? We love it. So let's dive right in, Christina. While we're right. uh, while we're talking, we'll you know chat a little bit about Christina's background and you know how she comes up with her beautiful designs. You can ask us questions on uh, Facebook or Instagram or on our YouTube channel, and we're we'll be answering questions live as we go through each of these segments. So feel free to chime in if you want to see something again. Let us know. We'll be happy to go back and um, show you what we can. All of these recordings will be posted to briarhorses.com as well as our social media channels. So if you miss something, hang tight. It'll be posted up at about an hour, hour and a half uh, following the, the workshop. So let's dive in. All right. So uh, we are going to be making these fun little hanging sun catchers uh, from the Briar uh, sun catcher kit. Um, so I'll just go through the supplies that you're going to need first. You're going to obviously need your sun catcher kit down here. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Mine's all over the place now. Um, and let's see, what else you're going to need? Um, you're going to need one of these little pin vice thingies. This is to drill the hole. That's if you want to um, make Thank the hang. You. If you just paint along and not do that, that's fine too. You don't have to do that. Um, and let's see. Um, if you notice this one, um, I'm going to be showing you the all the kit stuff. So just okay. you can use the kit. Um, this one you can notice is a little darker almost, like yeah. a little more okay. Yeah. Um, that's not the kit paint. That is actually glass paint. You can get these at your store. Um, it's labeled enamel, but it's got a little glass on there. They're like for wine glasses and stuff. Um, I actually prefer the Briar ones because I like how they're a lot more transparent and it just gives okay. it like a hint of the uh yeah the little pots yeah it comes in cool little colors lines in the sun a lot more mm -hmm. um but i mean if you want something dramatic like a stained glass thing like that those are the glass mm -hmm. with some regular black paint there to be like the leaded lines and a stained glass yeah um you can you need some sharpies if you want to make a little design mm -hmm. on your pony and not just do flat paint that's fine too if you want to just mm -hmm. do flat that's totally cool um then you're gonna need some little like gems and beads and things if you wanna okay. put that on the hangy thing. Nice. These, um, I think these are called perler beads. They're like those ones that you like iron together and put in the oven or whatever. When oh, you're okay. Yep, yep. Thing. But you can just use them as regular beads. Um, and these are fun too for these because they're super, super duper reflective. These little mirror pieces. Nice. On the supply list. So we're going to use one of those because that really pops the sun. Cool. And let's see. you're going to need some sort of string or wire or thread. Yeah. I like to use this um, clear one. It's for necklaces and, and things like that. It's jewelry wire or something, mm -hmm. but it's basically fishing wire. You don't mm -hmm. have to. Use it. Use this regular. is a little bit of a stretch to it. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's fishing wire. It's you can use whatever you want. You can use twine, you can use thread, whatever works. I just like this because it kind of makes it look like the stuff's like floating there. And yeah. not necessarily- it doesn't take you know, away from it. But if you have cool glittery decorative string or ribbon you want to use, go for it. Um, let me see. And then you're gonna need like a little plier thingy. Mm -hmm. um, if it just helps you twist in that little eye hook. Got it. And let's see, a cup of water, a napkin, your brush from the kit um hot glue gun mm -hmm. that makes it easier and I have a couple of alcohol pads here um you don't need these you can always just wash it in some soap and water but this is just quicker for a video and black paint if you really want to make your design pop against the or any kind of paint really because this one actually doesn't even have black paint this is purple paint and you can right. kind of see how the design mm -hmm. pops. um this little guy's got black paint there like that all right Let's get started. Let's move to the other camera, wherever that is on your screen. Um, so the first thing you want to do here is get our little eye hooks in. I think I showed these. Yeah, you need these little eye hook thingies. Mm -hmm. um, so how we're going to do that is you take your little pin vise, which is basically a little hand drill. Um, mm -hmm. I actually have a new one because I like this one better than my other one. Um, when you get one, try and get one that has a little twisty back like that because it just makes it easier when you're just you can do this. Oh, smart. 
not so much in your wrist like my old one. <laughs> so we're going to drill a hole wherever you want it to hang from. So I mean, mm -hmm. if you want to this way, then you would be drilling up in here. But right. I'm going from here. So we're going to drill a little hole. This just helps um, get that eye hook in there easier. Um, you could try and just twist the eye hook in there, but it it's difficult. <laughs> this kind of just gets you started. And if you have a Dremel and want to use that instead, go for it. This is just, you know, a little more easier, precise, quick, quiet. We've gone ahead and done ours in advance. So ours is already done. And also we've seen um, some comments with people just using them as keychains, which is kind of fun. Yeah, so instead of making them- I was them, actually gonna grab one of my keychains to show that you could do that too. You put this in here first and put the yeah. little on there too. Um, and, and then we're gonna take our, after you drill your little hole, mm -hmm. that's, we're gonna take our little eye hook and just start twisting that in there. This is gonna be a little tough. Do you know what size that eye hook is off the top of your head? I know we have um, this file list up on our website for anybody that's following along. Literally just grab these from the picture frame thing. I mean, there's all different kinds. You can use smaller oh. ones, bigger ones, yeah. whatever you want. This one's actually probably too big and I'm having like it's hitting the main here. So it gets a little difficult and that's when you want to um, grab your pliers and just twist that along. I might end up breaking them in here, but it's okay. And do let me know if I go out of frame because I'm trying to keep my eye on everything here. So for anybody that's following along, if you haven't already gotten all of your supplies and you want to do this um, activity later, on our website on the National Fun Day tab on briarhorses.com, you'll see the supply list for each of the workshops. Um, so Christina has listed everything with links to buy on so you can see exactly what you're looking for. Um, it's all pretty inexpensive. Um, a lot of times we find our supplies that we already have laying around the office. Um, you really don't even need to buy anything. Um, sometimes you can take a stable mate that you've already painted and take the paint off or take one of the finished stable mates that you find at a store um, and just paint over it. You can paint it white first and then start all over again. Um, so a lot of times with our fun days, we try and do stuff that you don't even have to necessarily buy. Um, you can just use kind of fun crafts you have laying around the house, which is always really fun. So it's a nice way to experience your models in a different way than just um, playing or looking at them. Exactly. And that was kind of mm -hmm. like, you know, the point here is that like, you could just use the kit. You don't have to do this hang thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Stuff I had a lot of this hanging around the studio. I think the only thing mm -hmm. I bought were the mirror things because I wanted to try it out. And um, yeah, it's just, just have fun. That's all, yeah. that's all it's about. That's I mean, what it's, it's about. A new, it's a new take on how to use this kit. Like exactly. kit, mm -hmm. you could just it and be happy. Great. That's what you want to do. But if you want to be a little creative and try new things, take a look. So we got our little hook in here. This yep. I like to do first also, because it also gives you something to hold on to when you're painting mm -hmm. um, and can get that out of the way. Now, if you're going to follow along with stringing uh, your piece, you might want to do this twice because it's going to have to dry before you start doing that. Otherwise, you're going to make a big mess. Oh, and it takes a little while for uh, the paint to dry. So um, next, you're going to take your Sharpie if you want and make a design on there if you want to design a, uh, some sort of little decorative thing on your model. I'll uh, make a little uh, pumpkin pony or something. Um, any sort of Sharpie will do. I can see what I'm doing here. I figured the simplest would be a pumpkin. <laughs> I suddenly forgot what a leaf looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what a leaf looks like. <laughs> well, a little different kinds of leaves, so. Try and stick with our ball theme here. Yeah, you can use a thin Sharpie or a thick Sharpie, whatever you'd like. Um, now, this is where you would end up going back over with the black paint to make it a little like darker and pop later. Yeah. But if you just want to use a Sharpie, you can just use a Sharpie and then go back over it later. So this will just give you an idea of where your design is. Um, and because the paints are so um, transparent, you'll be able to see what you're doing so you can trace over it later. Cool. And you're doing both sides at once, right? Um, you could. You could or do, do you one want to side. just do one side? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to do one side because a lot of the times, if you do both sides, you see through it and you can see the other side from the front. Mm -hmm. So if you want an you know, obscure design, I just do it on one side or like this one just has it on the one side. Right. Um, but you could also be mindful of where your design is and maybe put one over here on the other side or over here on the other sides if you don't want it like interfering with that. 
that's why these opaque paints are a little difficult because it doesn't quite like I had to leave a lot of these spots blank so you can see through sort of right so this one's not much different than painting with regular acrylic paint so I mean that's just a different way to do it if you wanted but I like the fun clear paints here cool all right I have, have I have some leaves on my little autumn themed horse here and also I forgot, but um, it's not super necessary. These should be fine, but I usually like to wash these um, before mm -hmm. to get all that factory goo off, or you could just take an alcohol wipe and just wipe it down just to get you know, all that machine stuff off. So it helps the paint stick a little better, but. Smart. Um, so, all right, now we're just ready to paint after you've got your design on there. Um, I'm gonna start with some of the orange. Now, first and foremost, throw perfection out the window. That is not what this kit is. This is right up my alley, Christina. Let me tell you. Yeah, this is not <laughs> what these things are about. Because when I first started using these, I was like, uh-uh. <laughs> We're not getting a nice shaded, you know, pretty pony here. That's not how they work. They actually kind of settle after they dry. So to paint with these, you actually have to kind of glob it. It's very different. You kind of got to glob it on there and smoosh it around and trust that it'll settle later because it will. Like this did not look at all like this when it was first painted. So did on. you did you hand paint those bats or did you mask those off? No, these are hand painted on. So I did it with the sharpie. I sharpened oh. it, and I okay. painted over it, and then we went back with the black paint on top of that. Okay, so you did the sharpie first. Smart. Yep. Yep. So all right, let's get to globbing. So just have fun with it. Make your colors, however. Okay, so let's show you how it goes here. Yeah. Literally globbing so that's it. That's a yes. Yeah, so that's a, a fair amount of paint. We're not talking. We're not being gentle here. Nope. Um, and then you kind of just push it around. Don't worry about the brush strokes. It will settle. I mean, hopefully that sharpie is dry. But <laughs> is this paint? Does this paint work best if you like? Can you go back and do layers, or is it best yeah. to put it all on wet? Um, you could do layers. Um, I haven't really done more than one layer because I like the clear. This is all just one one layer here. It just kind of stains the clear to the color you want. But if you keep going, you'll probably get a darker color. Like if you see my other. Oh yeah, you're right. If, so like, I have here I gets darker at the bottom. I it, did just the green there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah it, it went yeah. where it pulls more. Yeah, it'll get darker and more like. Kind of like a Jolly Rancher, the darker you go. Fascinating. It's fun. It is very and fun. I like it because of the mystery of it. You kind of don't know how it's going to settle there and the color that it's going to kind of be when it's done. So it's like a fun little, fun little uh, stress releasing craft, if you will. It is very calming. I always find it when we do events at places, we'll do stable mates painting and we get a lot of. Um, folks that will sit for hours and just, you know, they, they sit off to the side. They're very happy to just sit. A lot of kids will just sit and paint till their heart's content. And it's very calming. It's very relaxing. It's just nice to sit and have something to focus on for a little while. Yeah, definitely. It's mesmerizing. Um, although I do like these paints better because the, the ones when I try it at the Briar events, it's, you know, it's acrylic paint. So I'm well, it's acrylic, yeah. Yeah, and I'm used to using, you know, the, the higher quality artist grade paint. So I sit there and I put some brush strokes on there and I get really frustrated. <laughs> I don't think I've ever finished a stable meet at one, at one of the events. But this one, like you can't, it forces you to really just relax yeah. and just enjoy it. Do you ever, um, ever try mixing any of the colors in, the, in these prior paints? I haven't tried that yet, actually. That's interesting. Let's give that a try. Why don't we try that? What should we mix here? Um, I don't know what color to mix. How about some of this weird pink and blue? I don't know what we'll get out of that. Maybe some sort of purple? Maybe a purple. Let's mix it on there. Give it try a and mix it on my plate while we're, I'm gonna mix. I'm gonna try it right on the, uh, right on the stove. Oh, oh, look at that, kind of. Yeah, we get a little bit of a purple going. That's cool. See how that dries. Mix some <laughs> green and orange on my board here. Get like a mustardy color. 
<laughs> this is, it's just fun to just experiment and play around with these. I'm looping a little too much. And it's cool also it looks like mixing on here, you'll get a little more of a swirly effect. So it won't oh, be yeah, like, like a little like tie dye. Yeah, oh, that's fun. I like that. All right, so what sort of inspires you when you're doing all this? Is it just your, you know, free form imagination? Do you follow along with patterns? Um, yeah, things like this is kind of just like, it's kind of a break from a lot of the other things I do. Cause like, you know, in the other stuff you want to be like as realistic as possible. Um, when you're painting like the regular models, when you show and things like that. Um, sometimes that gets, you know, you get burnt out a lot on doing that, um, right. you know, worrying about perfection, always worrying about every little, you know, bruise and bump and scratch and, you right. know, thing. Um, so a lot of the times I'll do a little fantasy piece or something like this where it doesn't matter mm -hmm. what you're doing. You're not doing it for anything. You're not doing it. You know, it's an experiment. It's just, you know, just having fun right. and it kind of just resets your brain. Mm -hmm. But um, or a lot of the times I'll see something, something that inspires me and I'll be like, you know, it'll spark an idea or something and I'll just try that. It, most of my stuff is experimenting. Like it may look like I know what I'm doing. Half <laughs> you faked it very well. Yeah, <laughs> half the time I really don't know what I'm doing. So I just, you know, I just play around with things. And like the more you do stuff, the more experience you get and the more used to it you get. And then you know what works for you, what doesn't work for you and what, what works for me may not work for you. Like, you know, right. I do my tutorials and I always say, this is not the way that you have to do it. This is not one way to do something. It's, you know, however it works for you. I personally don't like certain brands of paint. Some people love them. Like I, it's not how I work. So it's, you know, it's really personal preference. And the more you do something and the more you use it, it, it's like a muscle memory. So, and a lot of the times too, if I don't paint for a while, I'll have to kind of start over and start learning things again. Like it, right. it's literally a muscle. So the more you do it, the easier it gets and the quicker it gets. And, you know, it, it's a lot of time and effort to get, you know, to the point where, you know, you're happy with your stuff. And even then half the time I'm not. Anyway. <laughs> I'm just going to remind all our friends watching from home um, or from our, our featured retailers who are participating all across the country. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask us live on our Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. Those questions will be sent right to my computer here and I can um, ask Christina um, in real time what your questions are. So we're happy to um, provide more detail or another angle on something um, so we can get all your questions answered by Christina. Uh -huh. And I would be happy to answer what I can. What's the number one question people ask you when they meet you or talk to you about your work? Um, the number one question is, how do you paint that small? Because <laughs> you um, do mostly miniatures. You do mostly yeah. really, really yeah. small stuff. I mean, lately I've been getting back into the little bigger things. Um, just to, you know, kind of give a little break and stuff because the, the miniatures kind of are taking over now and they're kind of like, you know, burning me out a little, but... Yeah, my my mostly things are the like micros and the micro minis right. and stuff. Like that's my deal. Or like um, you know, the really complex detailed white markings and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, again, it goes back to that constantly doing it and constantly like finding the methods that work for you. And I'm right. always trying new methods also. So I may find something like if I go back to a piece I started years ago, and this has happened many times, and I have a couple still that I haven't finished because my methods changed and to go back to do it the way I was doing it, it's actually harder than to do it, like to start over and start do it over. Oh, Interesting. Yeah. So it's, it's about experimenting with methods and stuff and constantly doing it. It's also about um, patience and trusting the process because you're not going to get everything in one layer. You're not going to just right. paint, you know, paint a horse one color and you're done. You have to layer those colors and know how to layer those colors to achieve the, the depth and the detail that you need. So, mm -hmm. you know, people say hair by hair and they do roans and stuff like that. Um, just one layer of herring with white paint is not going to do it. It's not going to give you what you're looking for. And I think that's where a lot of people get frustrated because they do that and they think something's wrong. Like they can't do it. They're just not done. 
You just got it. Not it done. That's not really good. Yeah. yeah. I love that. You're just not done. Yeah. And, you know, there was a quote that like, art's never finished. It's just abandoned um, because it's, it's never done. Like it, you yeah. can go on and on. You just have to know when to stop and when it's enough and to move mm -hmm. on to the thing. Otherwise we'll just constantly go over and over and think, you know, you'll never finish it or you're not good enough. It's just time for a new piece. That's all you're done with that one. Move on. So that is that. And that's not saying, you know, to rush things either. It's, you know, you just got to kind of, got to put the brakes on sometimes. And that is a lot, it's very hard to do. It's a lot harder than it sounds. Yeah. But uh, especially so, when you're doing white markings. <laughs> so I'm moving on to, I finished all my little leaves. So I'm moving on to now the overall body color. And I think okay. when your, your tip there of just kind of smushing it around and globbing yep. it on is spot on because you really can't, you can't really, uh, Move yeah, it in a way it's hard, hard to explain, but you have to, like you said, sort of just push it on there and hope yep. for the best. Exactly, like you can't really paint it's like gonna, you it's not going to slide the same way another paint like an acrylic would. Yep, it's more of yeah. a, a dabbing yeah. than a painting. <laughs> and then, like, don't pay attention to the brush strokes either, because if you notice um, the things you painted earlier, you've probably noticed they've already settled. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. So your I've, gone back, I've gone back to the purple little leaf I have here a couple times because it, it got globby when I was moving the horse around a little bit, but try and smooth out that blob. And the fresher paints will probably be a little better. Like this one's a little old, so <laughs> a little more uh, a little more globby than the fresh out the box. Oh, this is really interesting. We've done a lot of stable maze painting on these videos and you know using a lot of acrylics but I think this is the first time I've used this that I've personally used this kit so it's um, yeah it's funny. Yeah. I was we were, we were talking about the you know where did stable mates where did the sun catcher stable mates thing happen and I remember working with Summer Prosser in 2013 at Big Easy Batch when she was like I have this crazy idea <laughs> to <laughs> to use glass paint on the clearware stable mates and then we did a Briarfest workshop with it and now it's in the line. And it's, it's funny how, uh, it's funny how these things evolve. Yeah, that's awesome. And that, that's so summer too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crazy idea. <laughs> yeah, I love getting those emails. <laughs> I was thinking we could do, and at the time we were using um, glass art pens and they were significantly harder to use until we found these translucent paint pods. And, that was easier. Yeah, these are these are really interesting. Like I remember, like the first time I opened this, I was like, "Huh, well, I'm gonna have to figure this out." <laughs> do you enjoy the artistic challenge of it, or do you would you prefer to you know be in your comfort zone a little oh, bit? No, I I love love trying new stuff. Um, like I would much rather just not worry about the perfection or anything, or try a new thing that I know I'm not going to be good at. Although mm -hmm. you know. I do end up being like, I, I, it's like perfect or I can't do it type thing, <laughs> but I enjoy trying new stuff, but I don't enjoy when it doesn't come out good, but I know it's not supposed to anyway, when you do it the first time. Right. It's, it's hard to explain. It's like, it's like, you know, preach what you practice type thing, but it's kind of yeah. hard because, you know, everyone goes through this. It's like, yeah. you're not going to be perfect. And I know that, but it's just, you know, it gets a little uh, frustrating when you try something new and it's not, but then, you know, if you don't try those new things, you're not going to, um, you're not going to improve. Right. And it doesn't have to be with what you're actually doing. Um, like, I'm a, you know, you're an acrylic painter. That doesn't mean you can't learn from trying oils or you can't learn from trying, you know, um, mixed media or sculpting. Yep. It's yep. totally different. Um, my sculpting um, actually really improved when I was painting a lot one year. And I think it's because your your eye gets trained to see those things and you're doing multiple, multiple horses. You know, mm -hmm. I was stocking up for Briarfest to sales and showing and stuff. And I painted so many horses that year. And then when I took um, the sculpture workshop, I usually take um, like right before Briarfest, she right. was like, you improved tenfold. Oh. I don't know how you did that. Have you been sculpting? I'm like, 
no, but I've been painting a lot because you can see it all over and over and over again, even though it's different, different styles, different anatomy, mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. kind of fits in your brain. It just yeah. works your muscle in totally different ways. All right, I made a mess. So <laughs> do you wanna move on to our stringing? Yeah, let's move on to stringing. So at this point, I don't know if this is gonna dry in time, but when mm -hmm. you're done with this part and this dries, that's when you wanna go back in with your black paint if you want and sure. go back over this. Cause you might be able to see if you went over this, it's um, kind of, it may have faded the, the Sharpie a little bit cause I just kind of painted right over it. Um, it. So you can even go over it with the Sharpie again or the black paint will really make it pop. So there's my mess of a stable mate. <laughs> We'll Love put it. that aside. <laughs> oh, that just dripped everywhere. Okay. All right. So let's close this before we make even more of a mess. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like a tornado when I work. So I'm not okay. one of those super clean, all my tools are pristine. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't know that I've never, I've ever met a pristine artist. So <laughs> good. Well, a lot of the times, you know, you see videos and tutorials and it's just like this beautiful, like cutting board and lighting and no, no. This is a fun day. It's meant to be fun. We're fine. Exactly. All right. So we have our painted stable made all dry yep. and hooked up. So what you're going to do is take your string mm -hmm. um, and you're going to cut a length, um, double the size that you want it. So figure out how long you want it, fold that over and then cut that length because we're going to make like a circle first. Oh, interesting. Okay. So it's it's the size is going to be half the length that you cut. Put it that way. Noted. All right. So now this might be a little difficult to show, but um, I'll start with this. So you're going to tie a knot in one end. So you're going to end up with just basically a circle. Oh, so we're tying the two ends together. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, you probably want a couple of knots in there, obviously, to uh, Keep that there. See, I would have just assumed you would have just tied it straight to the to the eye hook. You could. Um, every time. Yeah, I mean, you could do that, but then um, you'll have to figure out a way to get a nice loop to hang it with, also. And then you can, you know, you can also tie that loop. But um, this might be this might be a little stronger, though. The way to do this way. Right. So oh, I did not bring scissors. All right, so I'm gonna show you first. All right, so we have our circle tied here as best we can, as I can see. Do another knot. Oh, that's good enough. All right, my hands are all sticky now. Okay, <laughs> so this is gonna be hard to show with this string, I think. So I'm gonna show you a rubber band. Put this aside so I don't lose it. Okay, so here is our string. Um, this is where our knot is, this black dot we'll say that's where or not we tied okay. um we're gonna put it through the eye hoop thingy doesn't matter which side you do that with the knot is going through the eye hoop it doesn't matter at this point right now okay so let me see is this one okay um so yeah so we have so now it looks like you have your string through the loop and there's two loops on each side one side has your knot the other side has the solid string now we're going to take the solid string and put it through the loop on the knot side. I can't even see what I'm doing here. Okay, there we go. So then you have it kind of like this and your knot should be by the eye hook down here. Okay, I'm struggling. I mean, to get it doesn't my... matter. It just makes it a little stronger because we're gonna hot glue right here. So we're gonna glue that knot down so it doesn't come apart. So that's why I like to keep the knot down to the thing. There, so let me do that with my string. And to get my, my eye hook is very small, so I'm struggling to get mine through here. <laughs> yeah, mine's a little too big, so I'm, I'm gonna grab scissors. Cause I'm gonna Look at that. My dirty outside scissors are right here. Apologize for the dirt. You're fine. Okay. Bendiest string on the planet. 
So a rubber band is a good idea too. Actually, we have to find. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, if you have a really long rubber band, that would work too. You can even string a rubber band. Um, so once you have that knot down there and you have your little loop at the other end here, mm -hmm. we are going to put a little, little dab of hot glue right there. And that's just to keep the string from swinging yeah, around on you. Exactly, keep it moving around. It also kind of locks that knot in, so it's not going to come untied or you know fall apart. I just like to make it a little extra sturdy. Oops, oops, oops. All right, mine's a mess. All right. And now we're going to take one of our beads. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, you don't have to use beads. I like to actually use a bead, at least for the first one, because then we can kind of also hot glue that down and make it even sturdier. Especially mm -hmm. these little yellow beads are cool for that. Do you yeah. find any particular wire is easier to string through the beads or the, like a wider opening on your beads are easier? Oh, definitely. Um, that's why I kind of like using these and how wide they are. Yeah. Um, but, and then also I like it because now we can kind of stick some hot glue in there. Oops. That was smart. This makes it easier to just kind of solidify that. Oh, I lost my glue stick fell out. Hold <laughs> on. There we go. Mm -hmm. Kind of solidify that first section there. So you're gluing them as you go down the string. Um, just really this one. Um, but we will glue the. Oops. See, but the you know the problem with the hot glue in this is that uh it melts these perler beads. <laughs> you might want a different type of. That's oh, funny. <laughs> but you know I you know I use what I have. And I just have fun, so it doesn't really matter. All right, so I just do that kind of just to lock that bottom part in there. This mine's a little messy because I'm trying to do it around around my phone here. <laughs> and then um, then just kind of put what you want on there. Uh, let's see, I'm going to string a couple more of these beads, and then I'll show you how to do the gems and such. Oh, I melted my wire with my hot glue gun too. I think this is fun because it's something you can do sort of at different times during the year, your decorations, you can do, you know, holiday themed ones or summer yeah. themed ones. And there are always lots of different options and different ways to decorate it as you go through. Yeah, definitely. And match your bedroom or. Yeah. Yeah. You can use like name beads and like make little gifts for people and have their names on them. Yeah. What would really be nice too. I didn't have any, but those clear, um, like, kid bracelet beads like you can get at the yeah. craft store like those those would be awesome on this I just didn't have yeah. any and I didn't really have time to go out and grab some but those would be really great for this because they catch the sun anything that'll catch the sun really nice yep All right. so we have a bunch on there now let's take some gems there's these flat back type gems sometimes yep. they're um sometimes you have adhesive on them already which you could just you know stick them together but it's not very sturdy and they do fall apart after a while. So that's why I like to hot glue them together, even though they have the adhesive on them. Um, right. the I'm going to go ahead and suggest you take the sticker, the adhesive sticker off first, if you're going to yeah, hot glue exactly. them, so you don't just glue the sticker. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, so lay one down. So you're going to need two because you're going to right. put them back to back. You're going to lay one down. And that's why I like the adhesive because it kind of sticks to string there and holds it for you. Mm -hmm. kinda, oh, wait, we need some hot glue. Just for added, I keep losing my glue stick. I have red on one side and green on the other. Oh, that's that's a good idea. I like that. Um, yeah, it's just you know, I like that. You just have some fun. Just squash that on there. Stick to everything. Make the nuts. Careful of your fingers. And you can use um, you know, like regular glue too. It's just going to take you a little longer because you have to wait for it to kind of dry. Like right. Edmund's tacky glue or even Elmer's glue would probably work. Right. This is a nice uh, rainy day project. You can leave it, come back, when it do the next step, come back. Let's see, so now we have our little gem on there. Yeah. And you're going to kind of do the same thing with the mirrors too. 
the mirrors are sticky as well. You don't have to be sticky because you're gluing. Okay. Yeah, no, the, the mirrors aren't sticky. So that's why we're definitely going to be using the hot glue for this. Um, for the mirrors, normally, if you don't use the hot glue, you might want to use like one of those jewelry glues, like the E6000, because um, it's a really sturdy glue. Um, hot glues work just fine. These held up for months now. So this, you know, have no problem with that. Um, they have little circle ones. They have square. We'll just use square. Now you can, you know, put it as a square or you put it as a diamond if you put it this way. Right. Yeah. We're going to do that. So now you want to kind of lay that there and put your glue over the string. Mm -hmm. Kind of get, you know, all over it. Oh, that's probably too much. A little overboard there. And really statement. plop that right on top. Ta-da. And there you have it. Make sure you, you know, put the correct sides out because <laughs> they're not shiny on both sides. They're kind of gray on the back. So make sure you lay the reflective oh, down. There. Use that. And then, you know, same thing with all your gems and beads, however else you want to design your stable mate. And it's great that the kits come with a bunch of little stable mates to, you know, make a whole bunch of different kinds, different colors. We do a whole bunch. Okay, we do have a couple of questions. Okay. Is there a trick to painting with the sun catcher paint, which I think we can talk about a little bit more again about the how you just sort of glob it on there? Yeah, um, it's a lot different than the acrylics, as we were saying before. Um, it, it's a glob and smush. It's not <laughs> paint, paint, a normal paint, because they will settle. They um, they don't just stay where they are, kind of. It's kind of hard to explain, but you can't just brush it on. You have to glob it and trust that it'll go where you want it. Because if we look at our piece now that has dripped all over the place. So yeah, put this on like a paper towel when you let it sit, because you could see it's starting to drip. And we kind of pick that off. <laughs> And, um, but if you notice before when we were doing this, even he's even a little globby over here. So you just kind of like gotta tweak it a little bit. Um, there's really no brush strokes now. It's kind of just a flat different, oh, <laughs> so that's a lot of glob. Flat, um, almost just levels. It kind of levels itself out. So you get right. levels of color and right. a lot of the color kind of seeps into the groove. So you'll get mm -hmm. darker color in the grooves. Um, let me see if I can show you the other one. You sort actually... of take more on your brush than you think you're going to need and put yeah. it in one spot and then move it around. Instead of pulling it, you kind of mush it. Exactly. And you can even see how it settled a lot in the bottom of the tail here. Right. Because uh, it's darker and it's in the grooves. So mm -hmm. like I'll actually show you as, because I don't know if you were tuned in before, like to start, like you literally want like this much on your paint right. and just slap that on the horse and just yeah. smush it. Push so it around. The, everything you know about acrylics, do the opposite. Yep, exactly. That's what I said. Throw perfection. That was that was rule number one. It was. It was. It goes out the window. This is like little just slap and go. <laughs> yeah. and let's see. Another question from YouTube. What is your favorite briar mold? My favorite briar mold is okay. I'm gonna see if I can say this right. Georg. Is that yeah. how you pronounce it? Okay, yeah. it's the Georg. So I have one on every color of that, except the auction models, of course. Um, That's but, a pretty um, new one though. Yeah, it is. Um, it has well, beat out everything until then? <laughs> well, I actually, I didn't really collect original finish um, for a long time. I, I only got my first briar on my 16th birthday uh, from one of my best friends at the time. Um, Hi, Tony. Um, so she got me this, uh, the laying down black unicorn full. Okay. And um, I still have it. It's my first briar. I have a bunch of the couple in my original collection. Um, I, so I went on, I collected maybe, maybe about 40 or 50, all different kinds. Okay. Um, and um, it, I kept them in boxes because I'm crazy. So they took up a lot of space. Well, so um, there's there's two camps on that. So it's interesting you're in the box camp because we've I'm got the box plenty camp of, for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. Plenty of people that only want so I found a feather in our supplies. So I'm gonna add a feather to mine. Move um, it on. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, there's people that immediately take them out of boxes and then there's others that leave them in boxes for their entire life. Yeah, I was that in the beginning. Um, now, like in the modern days, like a lot of them don't come in boxes anymore. So depending on what you're buying, yeah. Yeah, it kind of messes with me to have some in box and some out. So I will take them out, except I do leave like the briar, like the celebration models in the boxes because they're just nice boxes. It's special like packaging, the boxes. yeah. And they look really nice. So I have a, a lot I still do keep in boxes. And I do have uh, my original collection. I have maybe about four or five left from that. Um, okay. You know, I got married and we moved to a house and it was like, all right, it's time to kind of let these go. And kind of that's how I kind of found this side of the hobby. <laughs> so I only really started in this stuff in like 2011. Wow. And um, my yeah, my original finish kicked back up after that. So I did regret selling a lot of the ones that I had. Um, but um, yeah, so it kind of kicked back into gear in the last few years. and. Um, so that's kind of why that's probably why he's newer. And that's my favorite one now. Um, but I don't know. Nicholas is kind of, kind of, kind of doing it for me. He's got a sweet spot going on there now. Yes, I, <laughs> I have noticed the theme. One, I have the regular one. So it's like, I, I, I sense another conga coming. <laughs> Noticing a theme with your, uh, your German allegiance to Brigitte. Yeah, I guess so. But um, yeah, so that's, that's that. I love it. Yeah. So if it wasn't for that birthday gift, I probably wouldn't have started collecting briars. Well, thank you to Tony for <laughs> igniting that fire for you. But were you into painting, corset painting realistics before you got your first briar or was briar what got you into painting? What came no, first? briar, what, um, I mean, I'm, I've always been um, artsy, um, always loved horses. I mean, I had, you know, I had these cheap little you know knockoff things like I, I always had horses and played with horses like my little ponies like I was I was more the my little pony generation okay because um, you know that's just what my parents bought me and everyone bought me because you know and you know and the little cheap little like things that looked like horses I guess there were horses <laughs> I didn't discriminate if it looked like a horse I liked it I like um, it. but I've always been an act like art artist drawing and all that stuff and um I actually, I went to school for animation, traditional animation. So I was a traditional animator. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then the recession happened and the company I was working for in the city, they split up and I was doing contracting for a little while. And I was like, I need something to get back to the traditional aspect because everything was going computer and 3D, which right. I have nothing against. It's just, I don't like doing it. It wasn't like, your medium. Yeah, it wasn't for me. And um and that's when I kind of found the forums and everything of painting these horses. I never thought to actually paint these things before. Like I was always paper, canvas, yeah, things yeah. like that, animating. Um, uh, it, it was the it, one thing that just like stuck. Like it was just like, this is it now. <laughs> so that's when I actually kind of quit my animation and just started doing this. Wow. So, yeah. That's it a was big a whole, leap. New, whole new world. Yeah. So there's my so, little one. Uh, we have another question. What is mm -hmm. the best way to remove the sun catcher paint from a model? Um, I'm guessing either before it's dried or after it's dried. See that I'm not sure, but to remove paint, I usually use, um, I'm not sure what kind of paint this actually is. Cause if it's an enamel, it may be a lot more difficult to remove. Um, right. Cause these black paints are enamel um, and not much gets enamel off, but acetone, but acetone will also eat the plastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. kind of defeating the purpose um if it's not as not an enamel and it will come off like a regular paint i sometimes use oven cleaner um purple power you got to be really careful though when you use those mm -hmm. things because you know, they're caustic they're not really good for you so if right. you don't have to take it off don't take it off if you could sand it as smooth as you can before you you know repaint on top of it i don't think you're if those don't work, then I don't think you're going to get that clear stable mate back to do the clear stuff, but you can always paint over stuff. You smooth it, you know, sand it smooth and just paint over it. Maybe you can experiment and check back with us and yeah. we'll post the, yeah. we'll post the answer to that question <laughs> yep. later today or tomorrow. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> we'll find the right way. I love it. Uh, one more gem and I think I'm done with my guy here. We'll do, uh, put one in here. See, some of these I didn't even bother with the hot, oops, hot glue, but just for show purposes. But, you know, it won't be very 
you won't have very good longevity if you don't really glue those, but okay. There, I love it. That's beautiful. Yeah. So as a little wrap up here, because we're coming up on our on the, our hour. So oh, no. let I know it went by fast, right? Yeah. Let's show your original stable mate and that we were working on earlier. And if you could just sort of run through the basic steps again for anybody that is going to be trying this workshop a little later and is just following along from now. Yeah. Just a little okay. reminder of how to get started, any any basic tips and tricks you've got from the beginning. Better. One if you have any other outstanding questions, feel free to get those in here before we um, sign off with Christina, but you could always post them later and we'll be sure to get those questions over to Christina to be answered um, for when we post the, um, the replay later. All right, so here's our original, oh, there it is, our original guy. You can see kind of the paints have settled. You'll have to like go in every so often and kind of clean up the drips because mm -hmm. this is a settling paint. So um, what we did previously is we kind of cleaned off our model, which I should have on camera, but I didn't, I forgot. So this is an alcohol wipe. We clean that off. Um, once that dries, we globbed on paint. So we don't brush it like we do acrylic, we glob it. Kind of, that's literally what you got to do. And then you just kind of push it around right. until it levels off a little bit. Yeah, I think seeing that, seeing the amount of paint you put on there for the first, yeah. for the first little bit is. Yep. A bit surprising, but it's good to see. And I'm not even like brushing it. I'm just kind of pushing it. So mm -hmm. this will level itself out and see it, like these darker areas will probably drip towards the bottom. And that's where you got to kind of keep wash, wiping it off. Right. It'll also settle in the grooves here and stuff like that. And so I found that, as it dries, it gets a little thicker. Mm -hmm. It's a little easier to move around if it has a second to, to dry a minute. Yep. And my paints here aren't even that fresh. So they're a little more um, gloopy than when you first get it. They're a little easier to like mush around. Mm -hmm. when they're yeah, fresh. fresh out of the kit, they're very, very yeah. watery and sort of viscous. But uh, just sitting out here for this 45 minutes we've been on, they've already started to firm up a little bit. So I, yeah. I imagine if I started again, it would feel a lot different. Yeah. And it'll get like a skin on top too that you're yeah. kind of going to get under. But um, yeah, so before we painted that actually is where we drilled our hole with the little pin vise on the top right. here. And then we added our... I don't know where my little eye hook went. I had an extra one. Oh, here it is. And then we took our eye hook and we screwed that in because this will give you a good place to hold when you're painting also. So we do that first and then you glob on your paint. And I would then, suggest using a larger eye hook. I think you, you said your first one was large, was a little too large, but oh yeah, something is, yeah, a little bit bigger big. that you can get that um, the wire through is certainly more helpful than the small ones. The jewelry just, ones are my personal small. suggestion. Yeah. The jewelry ones are going to be small. I think these are like picture frame ones, if I'm remembering. Okay. Because I had I put all my stuff for picture hanging in like a case where I grabbed it from, but there was also yep. keychain things in there. So, <laughs> the general so yeah, I, books. yeah, I think these are for like picture frames. So the bigger the eye hook, the better. Just be mindful of where you're, what model you're using and stuff, because sometimes it gets in the way. Yeah, the main was getting in your way a little big, a little big here. So if you had a smaller one, you probably could have put it a little more forward in this one. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah and then you know if you want to draw designs on you would draw it with a sharpie first uh what did i just do it oh you draw the uh sharpie first on here and then you paint over it and then you can go back and you know re do mm -hmm. the sharpie make it pop or use black paint black paint to um really make that pop that's what's on the um that's what's on this guy here the yeah. black paint you can see how it like kind of stands out and I didn't do bats on this side. I could have, but they kind of interfere with the other side because you can actually see over here how you can see through them. Um, yeah, you suggested doing the design. If you're doing a big, thick design, do it on one side, not on both. Or you could do like the bat in the center over here and then like two on the side back here or something. Right. I mean, it's up to you. If you like the way that looks, go for it. That's just what, you know, that's just what I prefer. Like if I want a clear looking design, I'll only do it on one side. And yeah, and then the, uh, I'll, I'll mention this again, the glass paints that you can get at the craft store, the, they say enamel on them, they came in like a kit, but they, you know, they're for like painting wine glasses and stuff, you can use those too. They're just a little more opaque than the briar ones. Um, so you have to be mindful of, again, what you're doing on the other side, because I had to leave a lot of clear spots here to make it a little more transparent, because um, you can see how much darker they are. And this is regular black paint, but, mm -hmm. and you can kind of see brush strokes here. This, this kind of works a little more like acrylic. Um, but yeah. kind of transparent. So I actually no, I prefer that. Yeah. 
I like the clear. Makes it look like candy. Yeah, they do. That would be a cool one, a candy corn. Colors. All right. Yeah, I think that's well, thank you so much, Christina. I really appreciate your time. And this was really fun. And I hope people post, post photos of what you've made at home and yeah, share please. your stable mates with us. Yes, Christina will follow along. I'm sure she'll be happy to see what everybody's done at home. We can't wait to see what you guys have created. Yeah. If you have any questions that you've come up for after this is uh, done being live and you want to ask more questions, feel free to post those to Facebook or on Briar Horses on Facebook or on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. <laughs> They're very forgiving. <laughs> and then just like a little suction cup or a hook on your window and you're all good and you'll have yourself a very own briar stable mate or a sun catcher stable mate. Taking that kit to the next level. Oh, uh, you made a little wing, I see. That's cute. Yeah, yeah, I have, again, I got a little closer to, you can't judge my, my coloring. So my, uh, but yeah, we've got a little, little feather attached to the, the eye hook. So love it. Cute. I love it. It was so, so much fun. Great way to spend a Saturday. Thanks, Christina. Thank you for having me. This was awesome. Awesome. See you soon. Bye.